Hey folks, Nick here from another BookTube channel, and today I'll be showing off The Avengers number 57, the first appearance of the Vision in comics. Um, I don't really know what made me pull this out. I just, um, I don't know, I was just digging through my short boxes the other day. I saw this, and I really like this comic. I like this comic and the, the next issue, issue 58. Um, I think it's one of like the stronger uh, Silver Age storylines that Marvel put together. Um, great, amazing, like iconic cover as well. This one's been aped and imitated many times since then. Um, the, the stark red coloring is, a uh, really stands out. Um, and the vision is a really cool design. Uh, and I think we also open with super iconic first page as well. Um, of the, the form and the figure of the vision walking towards us in the rain and then we get the full body shot of his green and yellow outfit uh behold the vision is the name of the issue uh edited by stan lee but he's got to make sure his name's up there first roy thomas writer john buscema on art uh with george klein inking sam rose and lettering like i said i love this first page and in the uh opening narration it's mentioned that the rain does not bother this guy because it does not touch him it was right through his body. We get a little teasing of like what this mystery figure's powers are. And he makes his way to Avengers Mansion or Avengers Tower or whatever. I don't know. Um, where he spies uh, Janet Van Dyne and Hank Pym, Ant-Man and the Wasp, or Goliath and the Wasp at this point, uh, having an argument um, what, uh, where Janet wants Hank to stay. He's got to go uh, study some germ cultures. Um, so, you know, that's, you, you know, you fellas, you know, that sometimes your girl just has to wait because you got to study your germ cultures. So this is totally understandable behavior from him. And she obviously takes it, you know, way out of proportion. She gets upset. Um, and our mystery figure, the vision walks in, uh, through the balcony and frightens her. And she is absolutely terrified and she's the one that calls him the vision she says it's some sort of unearthly inhuman vision that voice like something from beyond the grave and when so i i guess what they're going for is that he's supposed to be like spectral and terrifying and i don't super get that from the costume like i like the costume but at this point, it's what it's Avengers 57. Marvel has been going strong with their superhero stuff for like seven years at this point. It's 1968 and FF1 was, uh, was at 62. So it's six years at this point. I imagine they've seen a lot of weird, terrifying stuff. And this guy in a green leotard with yellow underpants. I don't know that he screams an unearthly vision that's <laughs> worth being terrified over. Um, but I, I love the action of her shrinking down, her coat falling, um, you know, the, the the size difference selling that she got smaller, the enormous coat, her being really small. I like the, the little whoosh of her coming out of the keyhole and then regrowing. She gets away, but unfortunately the vision follows her and he comes right through the wall uh, and we get that um the crackle which everybody steals from jack kirby and again she's she's horrified n telling him to stay back and as he goes to uh deliver the killing blow he is here to kill the avengers he is overwhelmed with um this pain in his head causes him to collapse and faint love the color um on this uh, there's no c c uh, credited colorist i think marie severin was doing it at this point if somebody knows their marvel history better than me um which that's probably likely correct me in the comments but i really like the colors uh on this page and in that sequence jan is able to send out a beacon to um hank uh, a signal on like his belt or whatever and so he turns into goliath and we get that again the, the shape to the size changing where he becomes enormous now and we get it and you you sell that by having there be another person in the panel like you establish that there's another person on the sidewalk and now we can really sell that he's gotten really large uh he climbs up the wall 
It makes other people in the tower faint <laughs> as each climbs up. Um, finds Janet, breaks through the window, and she gives him attitude. <laughs> He's like, you broke the window. Even the guy that was trying to kill me just opened the door. Like, you didn't have to do that. She's really upset about the germ cultures. Ugh. Women, am I right? <laughs> Uh, they decide to take him to, uh, you know, to Avengers headquarters. I guess they're not at the headquarters. I think this is just their apartment building. Um, they've, they, get, they decide to take him over to Avengers HQ to investigate him, find out, you know, who this guy is, what he is. Uh, meanwhile, in Hawkeye's ap- apartment, Hawkeye and Black Widow's apartment, he comes home and finds Natasha walking on the ceiling for no reason. Um, and this is like uh, a, an attribute of early Marvel comics where they they need to make sure that every single panel is interesting in some way, which is valid, like 100%. But what that leads to is random moments where characters are just flexing their powers for just the purpose of like reminding readers that they have them. So he walks in, Black Widow is walking on the ceiling. <laughs> And he's like, I thought you gave up doing that for good. <laughs> and she's like, well, so did I when I completed my last assignment. But it's a lady's prerogative to change her mind, is it not? So she, she was just sitting at home, bored, I guess, fully in costume, and decided, I'm going to walk on the ceiling. Like, uh, you know, whatever little thing she has in her suit that allows her to do that. I'm going to just, I'm going to just do that again. I'm going to do it for fun because the patriarchy does, cannot stop me from doing so. Uh, and you got to appreciate that. But really, it's just so that kids reading this have something interesting to look at at all times. Hawkeye and Black Widow are also arguing a lot of domestic spats uh, in this issue. Um, and they rush out because they, they got the emergency call about this vision. They're going to go take a look. Black Panther is out walking in the rain. He's feeling unfulfilled. He left Wakanda. He didn't... He, he left his throne, which he felt was was hollow, to go help uh, you know fight crime, save the world. But he doesn't feel like he still doesn't feel like it's enough. And he foils a, a just a run of the mill robbery on the street, which makes him feel really good. Uh, and I, I don't know. I, I think I'm just a sucker for a good rain sequence. Like it's it's nothing more than just straight lines, but it, it just adds so much action to any sequence i think i'm a real sucker for that you put rain in a panel and you make it look kind of good i'll buy i'll buy it i'll buy into it good but john busema always really good at selling action um you know some kids on the street talking about how cool black panther is they wish he was in their neighborhood gives him an idea but we get a little note from stan that uh we'll have to find out in, in an ish or two what black panther decides to do Our Avengers are looking at the vision, investigating him. They find that he is every inch a human being, except that all his bodily organs are constructed of synthetic materials. So they deduce that he is a synthesoid. Uh, And he starts waking up and he attacks them again because he has this compulsion to kill the Avengers. We get some good John Buscema action. Take a take a moment to appreciate that. Um, always really like you know good exaggeration in the body movements and a lot of things flying around a lot of speed lines a lot of bodies being contorted goliath playing with his size getting larger pushing vision around um but vision he keeps keeps mentioning he can change his density so he makes himself like super dense to make him strong um and fight back but whenever he gets close to delivering the killing blow he kind of like loses steam and he kind of faints and so he starts to remember here. He, they, they call timeout. <laughs> and they say, timeout, I need, to, I need to sit down. Does anybody have like, you know, a juice box? Maybe my sugar's low. He starts to remember uh, the vision who sent him here. And it was the Ultron, Ultron 5, uh, who built him, sent him to kill the Avengers. But now that he remembered it, he doesn't feel that need anymore. So he's actually going to turn face and he's going to lead them to Ultron's hideout. Which is really convenient. This is a nice panel. You know, these really like deep blacks, deep shadows, attention to like dramatic lighting. I think that's really fun for like a you know, kid's comic. And we get the Ultron 
we got the, the the full body reveal of Ultron. Really cool look. I like his design a lot too. Uh, and he's um, monologuing to us uh, about how he programmed Vision to do this. He programmed his synthesoid to go kill the Avengers, but stop short of killing them so that he would uh, remember where he came from and then lead them here. And this way he can deliver the killing blow on his own. Uh, I guess even though he built like a perfect killing machine that would have just completed the job successfully I, I, in his hubris, <laughs> he wanted to do it on his own. So he, uh, he sets traps for them uh, in his little compound here. We got a, I don't, I, this is the only like misstep in my opinion, in the issue uh, in terms of layout where um, Goliath is caught in a trap and you're supposed to read these panels like from here to here down and then back to the left. That to me is a little clunky. Um, and I actually didn't catch it at first where I read this and then this and then this, uh, cause that just made more sense to me. Um, I see now that like they were, they are trying to lead our eyes to the right by keeping these word bubbles connected by having his arm break the panel. Um, but just my, by reading comics for so long, I'm used to like going here, here, here. So that was a little awkward. Um, but I got over it. <laughs> um, Goliath gets knocked out. Uh, and the rest of the Avengers are now trapped in this, uh, between these two walls that are closing in on them. And I think we're, we're meant, there's, they're meant to be in a boxed room even, and that they, they, this isn't open because <laughs> otherwise they could just walk towards us and then out. <laughs> so I think we're seeing through a cutaway wall. And they can't escape. The walls are too strong. But Vision says, I could change my density. I can go through this wall. I could save us all. And they're like, you know, yeah, yeah, you could do that. Or maybe you're just leaving us to die because you are really evil. So Vision's like, I'm going to make you trust me. Like, I, I, whatever I got to do, I'm going to save you. And then maybe you'll trust me. So he leaves. I like this this a lot. I think that that's a, that pick goes hard. <laughs> I like that it's an open panel. I love the stance. I love the the look, the glare on the face. Um, he just looks super evil. Again, playing with color, just like having it all be washed out in green. Really fun. Uh, Vision and Ultron battle. Ultron tries to dip v Vision in this vat of uh, whatever, acid, uh, something like that. I don't know. It would kill him. It would, it's bad. Uh, Vision saves himself by, again, changing his density to practically zero. So none of this liquid could touch him. We set that up on the first page that the rain was going right through him. So this big tub of acid didn't touch him either. And we, uh, we get our conclusion with vision, um, baiting Ultron into attacking him again, turns himself invisible. Ultron goes right through him. And, uh, he's got these electrodes in his neck that that's, <sighs> Marvel explanations of like science are they they very rarely make any sense. But he baits him into jumping into this this ex electric wall, causes an explosion, blows him to smithereens, and Vision's like, "That's how I planned it." You know, I I, I knew what his weakness was, so uh, that's it. Now Ultron is gone, except his head is missing. Now, this is a really interesting final page because we have, we have an epilogue where a young boy finds Ultron's head and like plays soccer with it for a little while and then just discards it, throws it in the, in the, in a trash heap. Uh, and the narration throughout it is, um, the poem Ozymandias by Percy Shelley, I think wrote that poem, um, which ironically is one of my favorite poems of all time. Uh, I'm not really a poetry guy, but I, I really like that poem. And I encourage you to look up that poem and uh, take your own interpretations away from it. And you could see how it applies to these images that you're seeing here. Um, but that's it. That is the first appearance of the vision. There is, uh, like I mentioned, a, the, the next issue is also very vision heavy. Uh, and I actually really like that issue too. So if you want me to do that issue, uh, you know, share this video, help me get this to, you know, a couple hundred views, um, you know, or, or let me know in the comments that you want to see more 
uh, you, you wanted me to continue this storyline. So that's it. Uh, let me know if there's anything in this issue that I missed that you think is worth talking about. Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today. But now it's time to get back to reading.